it's another drunken heathen challenge and another, uh, not so much of a bumming, as much as it is an unwanted fingering. Today with Marina Shut Up. Let's see what we have. Hey friends. I'm not your friend, buddy. So I kind of just wanted to sit here and talk at you a little bit. To the point, please, woman. <laughs> All right, so on to the actually semi-substantial part of this video. Oh, goody. I wanted to talk about Game of Thrones. Oh, well, goody. That shit's my joint. Let's do it, blatant closet lesbian. I don't know if I've ever talked about Game of Thrones on this channel, which is weird because I minored in communications. Bitch, I swear, I will cut more of this video. Don't you think I won't? And I used to study English lit. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Fine, fine. Cut her down. Better be, better be. So the reason that I've been thinking a lot about representation in Game of Thrones Is it because you can't enjoy anything without finding some shitty little problem with it? Is because I've been staying with my family and both of my brothers love Game of Thrones. And so you have to ruin it for them, naturally. I love Game of Thrones. Um, most of my friends watch it. My boyfriend doesn't watch it because... He doesn't fucking exist. On to the point, please, you crazy fucking broad. Ah, fuck it, I'm skipping this shit. You're a waste of megabytes, Marina. But what I realized the other day is that there are more major characters in Game of Thrones that have red hair than there are black or Asian characters. Oh my, I, I can't believe I'm about to have this argument about a show with fucking dragons in it. And in case you were wondering, the population of black and Asian people in the entire world is much, much, much larger than the population of redheads. I think redheads are only like 2% of the population, so very insignificant, yet somehow they dominate a lot of Game of Thrones. Because the continent where it is mainly set is apparently based on the British Isles all the way down to the fucking wall. And I'll tell you what, we have a very different relationship with ginger people round these ways, probably because it's synonymous with people from over that border. And even if I'm wrong, it's still better than the shit you're about to suggest. But I've also seen it in a lot of other like fiction. Harry Potter, the Weasleys are an entire family of redheads, which... I think it's just genetically impossible. It's a recessive trait. Right, that is it. You've poked the bear on this one, Marina. You fucking vapid ass window licking crayon eating nowhere near pretty enough to be that dumb personification of a fucking migraine. You wanna talk genetics? Let's talk fucking genetics. This is Mrs. Fucking Weasley. She is fucking ginger, which fucking means the genes for her fucking hair color will both be fucking ginger. If she had ginger and brown genes, her hair would be fucking brown due to the fucking recessive nature of the old ginger gene. This is Mr. Fucking Weasley. He too is fucking ginger, meaning he too would have the same fucking genes for fucking hair colour. Mr. and Mrs. Fucking Weasley do the bad thing and Mr. Fucking Weasley doesn't pull out in time, which gives us Bill. Bill gets one gene from his mother and one gene from his father that govern his fucking hair colour. But his fucking mother and his fucking father are both fucking ginger. So he is guaranteed to get ginger fucking genes from the both of them, resulting in ginger fucking hair for him. Once again, you said it yourself, Marina, the ginger gene is recessive, so any gene alongside it would result in that one being dominant. Which would fucking mean, when passing those fucking genes on, their fucking children will be nothing but fucking ginger. If one did pop out with different coloured fucking hair, then we know Mrs. fucking Weasley would have to come up with some answers that extend beyond you know fucking who did it. You have just been scienced. Please come to the front of the line to collect your shut the fuck up. And I don't, I don't really give a fuck about the accuracy of redhead representation. I'm more concerned about the lack of representation of people of color in fantasy, just in general. When we have a black Johnny Storm and potentially a black James Bond for the sole purpose of black, then forcing representation is detrimental to the overall cause, right? So if a show is based on, say, a popular book series, then the characters have already been outlined. Make a white character black and it's progressive, but make a black character white and all the regret. And that's not to say that there are zero people of color in fantasy or there's no people of color writing fantasy. So everything is just fine then. Good video. I think Ursula Le Guin is a great example of this. I'm not disputing that there aren't important characters of color or authors of color who are making 
great contributions to the realm of fantasy. Authors of color, fuck me, you'll add of color to anything. Dentists of color, windows of color, fucking people of color, of color. And I wouldn't even consider myself a huge fantasy nerd or anything like that. Oh, well, I bet you're glad you're talking about it on the internet of all fucking places then. Good job. Love Harry Potter. It's my favorite book series of all time. I love Game of Thrones. I read the first two books, but... We skimmed over the point for a little bit there, and now we're back to chatting shit again then, are we? If you're familiar with the Game of Thrones books, they're like a thousand pages per book. No, I can see how that would be taxing for such a feeble little mind. I don't even get out of bed for less than a thousand pages. So a little bit hard to like get through all of it. Um, one day when I have more time, I'll definitely do that. You do realize there aren't any pictures, yeah? But I do think it's possible to critically analyze and talk about the television show separately from the books as its own complete thing. Oh yeah, because you wouldn't dream of commenting on something you know nothing about, would you Marina? You and the rest of fucking YouTube. So when I talk about Game of Thrones, I'm specifically talking about the television show. Covering your ass early on, I appreciate that. I mean, fuck doing any preparation, right? Maybe get your facts straight first so you don't make any stupid mistakes? No, no, I'm sure you've got it sorted. Parts of the books can definitely be relevant to the discussion, especially if they diverge from the HBO series, but... Yes, we get it, Marina. You do books. Moving on. This is specifically where I'm coming from in my analysis. So when I did post on social media yesterday about Game of Thrones having more major characters with red hair than there were black people on the entire show, definitely pissed off some nerd boys. Well, I can see why. Game of Thrones is a fucking religion to some people. I mean, that's cool. Not everyone has to have sex. So when you bring a fucking race issue into it, some people are going to get annoyed. Gotta love those nerdy fanboys who feel the need to be gatekeepers against any sort of critique of the things they love. You are making a race issue where there was previously no race issue and you posted it on social media so people would see it. That's called stirring up shit, Marina, and only I'm allowed to do that. Which I never understood because I think that the things I love are more interesting when you're able to critically analyze them. Critically analyze? Yeah, but not imply they're fucking racist. People tend to get a bit funny about that, especially in a time when people are quick to disassociate themselves with anything that is deemed prejudiced even in the tiniest of ways. If something is great, then it deserves to be, you know, critiqued in a way that points out the pros and the cons. And you are seeing the fact that there are more redheads in Game of Thrones than black people as a con, whereas most people would call it casting the fucking characters. One of the main arguments I received is that Westeros, which is the main region in Game of Thrones that is explored, but it does occasionally diverge from that is based on medieval Europe. Great Britain, actually, which you can tell by the accents becoming broader the further north you go, the fucking wall, and the red-headed barbarians that live beyond it. To most people, that would answer most questions of race, but Marina is only halfway through. And something that I was talking about on the old Tumblr the other day. No, not Tumblr. Nothing good comes from fucking Tumblr. Which I think is relevant to this discussion was the idea of Watsonism versus Doyleism. Fucking hell, you and your isms. Which I didn't know were terms until the other day, but they're super helpful in having these conversations. Yeah, you only learned about it the other day and that means you can tell us all about it, right? The terms originate from Sherlock Holmes where Watsonian is referring to the fictional narrator, Dr. Watson, and Doyleism is referring to the actual author of the series, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. How did you fuck up an old man's name like Arthur? That can't be the first time you've come across it, surely? I used to mix up the words Arthur and author when I was a kid, which is a fun little fact about Marina. Oh, oh, I've actually got a remedy for that. Stop being a fucking retard. If you're someone who's taking a Watsonian perspective, then you're only thinking about your argument in terms of the, act the fictional universe that was created. And in this case, is loosely based on an actual point in time and space, as you said earlier, remember? It's basically looking at things from the reality of the fictional work 
and only being able to explain things based on that reality. Do you know, I can tell by your expression that you haven't got a fucking clue what you're talking about. It's like watching a dog behind the wheel of a car wondering how the fuck it got there. There's no outside author or cultural influence because you're only really gonna be thinking of things as if you were someone existing in that universe. And I guess, as the show Game of Thrones isn't filmed in anyone's perspective, everything you are saying is irrelevant! Yay! Joyalism is the perspective that I personally tend to fall into because I used to major in, you know, English literature, and that's what all of our papers and all of our study was, was looking at why an author did a certain thing and how they might have been influenced by the culture they were living in and how that affects the narrative. Well then why are you talking about the show and not the books? How did that English literature course go for you? What happened when you had to read Romeo and Juliet? Did you just watch Baz Luhrmann's film with Leonardo DiCaprio and then write an entire essay on the guns they used and how Mercutio died on a beach but later went on to star in Lost? Yeah, I bet you fucking nailed it. So someone from a Doyless perspective would be making commentary outside of the universe and thinking of the fictional work as a creative object rather than something that just is. So if I do a bit of research on George R. R. Martin, I will find he's a massive racist, will I? And that's why there aren't many black people on the show? Well, hold the fucking door! So when I talk about representation of Game of Thrones, but just in general, I'm not talking about, well, it only focuses on Europe and that's why there were no black people. No, of course not, because that would be solving your problem, wouldn't it? And we can't have that, because when everything is fine, you're not. I'm thinking of the motivations and the reasons and the potential biases that the author or the show creators might have had that would make them want to only focus on Europe. Oh, so it's not inclusive when it comes to other continents. Coming from America, the only place to have a World Series that doesn't involve any other countries. Unless, of course, you're Canadian, Marina, in which case I can't be expected to tell the fucking difference. And to only highlight white characters. It's like when you read a history book in high school and you think, oh, well, we're only learning about Europe and America, so that's where all of the important historical events happen. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Almost like you're expected to learn your own history first. When you're in high school, you have to take world history and I remember that there was a whole chapter dedicated to World War II, which, not saying that World War II isn't important, but then there was only one chapter dedicated to the whole history of Asia. Oh, I think I might be able to clear that one up for you, Marina. <clears throat> it was World War II. World War. All-encompassing. World. World War. World War II. The sequel to World War One, with a larger budget and one hell of a villain. World War. So I think if you've only been taught history that is incredibly American or Eurocentric, then... You are probably from America or Europe. You're not going to realize all of the history that exists outside of that. And I do wonder if the Eurocentrism in a lot of like historical books affected George R. R. Barton's decision to only focus on Europe? Well then put it this way, if he set it in Africa, people would complain that he is a white guy writing about black people, saying that it's not realistic despite the fact that it has fucking dragons! But he created this entire vast universe and he knows the historical background for every area, every character, and you know, we could have... He could have just maybe focused a little bit on, you know, people of color. Maybe just like a tad. Just a tad. Just a tad. You'd like maybe one or two black characters in there, yeah? Well, Marina, I have a surprise for you. This is Grey Worm, ably portrayed by the one-trick horse that is Jacob Anderson. Don't get me started. Me and him have got beef. Now, Grey Worm is a member of the elite fighting force known as the Unsullied. And there are fucking loads of them. They outnumber the main cast. I don't know how you can go down the route of diversity when the show has possibly up to 100 black people in it and a fucking midget. Peter Dinklage, the little man with the big dick who was always going to be a dwarf with a surname like Dinklage. I mean, it would be weird if he wasn't. Would you be happier if he was black, Marina? Shit, I don't think I've ever seen a black midget. Do you get black midgets? Because I feel as though I should have seen one. I feel like people will bend over backwards to 
defend problematic parts of series just because they love them. And I feel as though some people will bend over backwards to inject some black people into a film or series so they don't get accused of being problematic. Like there's some burden that have to be carried onto the set. Token black people, Marina, that's what you're advocating here. And it's racist. Not like my question about black midgets though, which was science. Thank you to Kind Heathen for the challenge, and guys, make sure you go to his channel and check it out, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching guys, and remember, you can't write analysis without first writing anal.